You know what, Cheska? We like what we're doing here on OTR because we get to have these special episodes where we just go down memory lane and talk about the greatest games, greatest teams ever assembled in the history of basketball. Welcome to Off the Record with Migs. And Cheska, and yes, you are absolutely right because tonight's episode, we have some guests joining us who share five championships between them. And they have gone on to live the most amazing lives even after their playing years. Uh, their legacies are still very much talked about, very much remembered. And I'm so happy that we have them on the show with us tonight. Just for context, we've had greats from San Miguel. We've had greats from Alaska. Alaska. We've had, uh, is that their third or fourth? Basta San Miguel and Alaska yung maalala ko. Pero ngayon, we were going to talk about the TNT. The great mm-hmm. days of TNT. How it all started. How they formed a trio that is still being talked about today. Cheska, will you do the honors, please? Of course, joining us tonight on Off the Record are PBA legends Jimmy Alapag and Harvey Carey. And we are hoping that Ali Peak actually joins us because he said he was going to join us. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Harvey. How are you guys doing, Chess? Makes great to see you guys. That's a, that's for having us. All right. Yeah, where is Peak? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Peak he'll, doesn't he'll know where here. Peak is. Yeah, he'll he'll no, be here soon. I'm sure. It's 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 surreal, Cheska, because when we, you know meeting Coach Jimmy, you know with Alab, you know it's it's a surreal feeling to meet him already. But to talk about their heydays with TNT and their championships and with Harvey here. It's my first time interviewing Harvey, so sorry, major fan moment, guys. But uh, it's it, it's just great to talk about these things and uh, you know what paved the way for the current generation. Go ahead, Jessica. All right, of course, um, Harvey and Jimmy are now based in the U.S. Uh, Har- Harvey, can you tell us what you've been up to over there? Um, well, I came back to the U.S. last June. I've been back a little over a year now. So I got back in June. Then I started working in August at a private high school, college preparatory high school. Um, My role initially was to be with this program at the school where it brought in kids from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, A lot of first generation students, a lot of students that are the only English speaking in their family. So these other kids are filling out applications on their own without parents' guidance and, you know. Um, but to, to be a mentor to them. So that's what I did last year. So this year, school's starting in a couple of days. So now I've been put into the health and wellness department, and I will also be teaching PE to high school kids. Both so that's my very, new role. <laughs> both very suitable roles. Educator. Because, yeah. Educator. No, because even in your last years in TNT, you were already the kind of a teacher role model you were guiding the young ones already. So, yeah, right so did it come yeah. naturally to you or uh, when um, you got there? Not naturally. Um, just bonding with the kids was fine, but to be last year in a classroom setting, it was like an adjustment. So I, I have no background in teaching. Um, and just, it's a different to be on the court and having eyes on you instead of being in the classroom and then you have. 20 to 25 kids just looking at you like, like okay it's a little different you know so it was an adjustment but i love it i love being there and the energy that i pick up off the kids um and like you said cheska uh, just being around the young players as i was exiting my career kind of prepared me i guess for this role that i'm in now okay I hear I hear some kids in the background. Jimmy, is that Ian? Oh, of course. It's or all Kaylin. it's all three of them. Yes. It's all three of okay, them. Okay, there you go. <laughs> they're, right. they're enjoying their first weekend since they just started school last week. So it's it's their Saturday night. So they'll they'll be up late tonight for sure. Ah. Okay. Uh so Jimmy, again, like we we know that you got into of course. Uh, the summer league and all that. What uh, what else has been going on with you? What have you been up to? I know you just came from LA. Was it? Yeah. So I was yeah. I was recently in LA. Um, you know, as you guys know, Mike Brown's the new head coach for the Sacramento Kings, um, and he had actually assigned 
each of the coaches um, a player for the offseason just to kind of keep track and, and make sure that the guys, you know, were were following, you know, their offseason plan and uh, just kind of checking with them and, and, and basically getting the gym with them for for a bit. So I was down there for about four days. Um, but it's been a busy summer. Um, was in San Francisco and 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 Las Vegas for the summer league again. Um, but I'm back here in Sacramento now. We we've got some guys in the gym because um, we have training camp starting in a few weeks. So um, staying busy. But uh, again, I, I love it. Um, you know, to be around so many great basketball minds and guys who've been around the NBA for so long. It's you know, it, it's 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 so much fun every day to to be able to go to work and and just be around. You know, doing what I love. So uh, you know, still thankful and. It's crazy that I'm going to be starting year two in the G League here in, in, in about, a, about a month or so. Wow. All right. Wow. Yeah. You know, uh, it's great catching up with Harvey and uh, Jimmy. And, uh, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is when you put them together, and hopefully uh, Ali Peak will, 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 will come in, is the, the, the legacy that they've built in the PBA. Uh, maybe, Harvey, uh, I want to ask you, when you look back at the, all those years, all those championships, what are your maybe biggest takeaways uh, from your team and your teammates? Um, the biggest thing that I could look back on, um, besides winning all the championships, it was just the bond that we had as a group. Um, it was a very, very special group, obviously led by by Jimmy, who was our captain, um, and just trickled down, you know, his unselfishness um, to be the superstar quote unquote of the team or the league or the face of the league and just him to be one of us um set the tone so once Ali gets in I'm sure he'll agree but it's just that bond we shared off the court until now you know we're all brothers and um obviously Jimmy's godfather to my kids and vice versa we're in each other's weddings and um it's great. You know, I do anything for those guys. I love those guys. And those guys, those, that time was probably one of the best times of my life, you know, and it just went by so fast. But now that we're out of the game, um, you can look back and be like, wow, like it's something that not only we can be proud of, but, you know, now we have kids that they can look back and like, you know, this is what my dad did um, while he was playing. <laughs> Just as hard as I'm on now that we have kids. <laughs> so, Jimmy, uh, for you, if, if you want to add uh, your your takeaways too. No, I mean, I you know, just to just to add to what Harvey you know mentioned, um, I think I think that was really the the secret to our success um, with, with talking text during those years. Um, you know, obviously, we had a lot of talent. Um, I thought our depth was a, a huge, a huge strength of our team, and probably the biggest strength of our team um, because we basically had two two starting lineups um, during during that run. But again, it, it was just the bond, you know. And, and and like Harvey said, I think when you're going through it, it's it's happening so fast, and 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 the focus is is always on you know win again. You win one, win 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 the next one, and win that one, and and win another one again. And I think time moves so fast it's, it's hard to really try to stop and, and grasp what's happening in, in that in that particular moment but now you know Harvey and I you know both retired and, and removed from the game for a bit um, I think I know for both of us you know there's a deeper appreciation for what happened during that time because it was really a special time and and you know the bond that we had on the court and the bond that we had off the court you know was was absolutely genuine and I think it showed in in and how we played the game and, and, and our success uh, along with it. And the thing is, both of you were drafted together in the same year. Oh, man. Yeah, fortunately. <laughs> this is pretty best, best thing that pre could ever happen. Yes. Pre-smartphone. So, you know, it's hard to communicate with people uh, back here in the no States. Internet, parents, di no internet. Dial, dial up. up. <laughs> mobile line pa. Pwede pa mobile line. Mobile line oh, <laughs> Dial up. I had I had no I had no laptop, so we used to share Harvey's, and if it didn't work, we'd go to Robinson's Gallery into the right, internet, internet cafe. cafe. <laughs> we just hang out there the whole day. Go watch a movie. Eight hours. Get something to eat. Eight know. hours on Yahoo Messenger trying yeah. to talk oh to people God. back in the states. That's how it was, <laughs> but you know, just to come in together and to be able to lean on each other, being away from home for the first time, and going through the same 
trials or, you know, rough patches while we were there, um, it was really beneficial for us to have each other at that time. And I just like to add Migs and Chess. I, I don't think for me, I, I I really struggled with just being homesick. Um, it was just a different time for me in, in my life when I left the States to go to Manila. And as excited as I was to be starting my PBA career after what happened in, in 2002, like having Harvey there as my my friend, my teammate, my brother, like to be able to go through those that first year together was everything because – you know, when you're young, like, you know, you, you, you go through so many different things in, in, you, in your mind as far as the pressure to, to play and, and to win and, you know, just naturally being homesick, you know, coming from a big family and, and, and being in a new place. Um, yeah, I mean, it was that, that first year, uh, you know, set the tone for me for the rest of my career because I had not, a, not just a teammate and a friend, but a brother who we were living together. And any, any struggle, any, any disappointments, any, you know, any achievements that we had, we were able to share together, and that that carried on for for the rest of our career. I'll just make a uh, direct maybe analogy. Uh, when you talk about Harvey Carey, for me as a fan, he's like the Udonis Haslam of the PBA. You know, one team from the Miami Heat, all the way through multiple championships. And when you talk about Udonis, he had D Wade, just like in Jimmy Alapag, those partnerships, right? But um, in all those years together, winning together. Uh, what does it take? I mean, the fans just see the plays on the court, but uh, behind the scenes, Harvey, what does it take to actually um, be at the top or maybe meet your goals? Um, for so long, I for think so consecutively. I think it's just the dedication, mm-hmm. the love that you have for the game. Like when you say you want to put in the work, you have to really put in the work. For example, when I got a little older and I wasn't playing that much, I would still prepare and train myself like I was going to play 30 minutes a game. It was just embedded in me to work that way, especially to let the younger guys see see me working. They aren't, they aren't seeing me on the side getting a massage. I'm out there running and doing everything at 40, 41 years old where I shouldn't have been, been out there anymore. But, you know, it was just you – know, I couldn't take a day off. I had to be there. I would be the first one in the gym. And last one now, I, I used to have this thing, you guys, Jimmy's my boy, but I used to be upset when he beat me to the gym in the morning, like really <laughs> mad, like I'm going to beat him. You know, I walk in and he's already, he's already shooting free throws. Where I'm like, dang, you know, like I'm going to beat him tomorrow. But it's just like how we pushed each other in that way, just being competitive. So when the game starts, it would be easier. You know, that's how, that's how it was. And that's how I was able to last so long, just being driven every single day. From your view, Coach Jimmy. You know, Migs, I think, again, I think I think you just started with the work. Um, and I think, you know, both Harvey and I, you know, took it upon ourselves from a, from a leadership perspective to just kind of set the bar for what we wanted the team and, and how we wanted the team to work. Um, like Harvey said, you know, we, you know we, would, we would kind of just, you know, subconsciously compete with who would be there first. But at the end of the day, we would always be the first ones in the gym together with Ronadale. Um, you know, we were always the first three guys in, in the gym. And, you know, while we're in there working out, you know, here guys are coming in an hour before practice and we're done. You know, we're, we're in a full sweat. We're, we're getting ready to have our little like breakfast snack and, and, and recover for a bit before practice actually starts. And I think, you know, when you do that, you, you set the bar for the rest of the guys, because now if they see the veteran guys working that hard and being there, two or three hours before practice, then the younger guys don't really have an excuse to not be there early. And, and, and when you start to build relationships with the guys and, and, and now it's not just Harvey and Ronadell and, and, and Ali and Jason, now it's the entire team. And so we would all work out an hour, hour and a half before practice even started. And when you create that type of environment and that type of, you know, camaraderie and chemistry with your team, you're going to give yourself a chance to win and, uh, and win a lot. Well, for me, I had to I had to be in the gym earlier because I wasn't as skilled as Jimmy or Ronadell. But what I had to do was outwork everyone. You know, I had to be in the best shape possible, never get tired, be in the weight room, be the strongest, and then go out on the court and work on my my game before practice. So I had to go in. So I always had that chip on my shoulder where I had to prove everybody wrong that I belonged at that level, and that's what I carried as well as I as I played throughout my career. 
Wait a minute. Why why is it that when Harvey talks about playing, I keep hearing shoulders, shoulders, the shoulders. Uh, what is it with Harvey's shoulders? What was that? Yes. Shoulders? Yeah. These why do I things? remember this? <laughs> See, you, mean, you mean these I things? These, things? <laughs> <laughs> these are natural right here. You know what I mean? <laughs> he didn't, Jess, he didn't work for those. Those are natural. <laughs> I came out the womb with these. <laughs> That's what you call a God's gift, right there. <laughs> we're, we're not all we're not all born with that. I had, okay. I had, to, I had to fill my body in to uh, catch up to my shoulders. <laughs> okay, natural, natural. There you go. Natural. There That's you why go. I got. The, what is it with yeah. Harvey's shoulders again? But anyway, okay. So we have a segment called. Uh, do you have another question, Mix? Before we I have just, so just, okay. just 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 a follow up. Um, of course, when we got to talk to guys from San Miguel. From Alaska, they've had their own versions of success, right? But I think Jessica, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Jimmy and Harvey drafted in 2003 until Coach Jimmy stayed in at TNT until 2015, so that's like around 12 years. And as much as the world has evolved from 2003 to 2015, you mentioned about the cell phones, the internet cafes, <laughs> the world has evolved also, right? But maybe from the time that you were together, so many players coming in and out, but you guys, you, your course stayed there. What has evolved maybe at, at least for those 12 years that you guys were together? Uh, Kojimi. Well, I think, Migs, when, we, when Harvey and I first got drafted um, in 2003, we, it was a very veteran group. Um, and, and we were both fortunate enough to be two young guys joining a team with that many, with, with that type of veteran presence. I mean, you know, Asi, Vic Pablo, Mark Talan, Patrick Friend, Bong Ravenna, Felix Bellano, like guys who had been in the league for, for a number of years. And so for, for two young guys like us to be able to just kind of step into that team, you know, they one, they welcomed us, Migs, um, and, and made us feel like family right from day one. And at the same time, those guys taught us what it was like to be a pro in the, in the PBA. And I thought that was that was huge for both of us. And that's why you know, we were able to win a, a championship um, that first year. But, you know, through those years, I mean, there were a lot of ups and downs because as that group got older and, and those guys retired, you know, we transitioned to be a young and talented team, but it just seemed like we could never, we could never get over the top. Um, you know, we, we, we had a few, you know, appearances in the finals, but, but, but never won it um, until, now we, we we transitioned to what 2000 what, what year was that hard 2009 when we, we won, won again that, yeah it was six years apart from that first one we won our rookie year and and you know then again now now we were kind of turning into like the veteran the status veterans. of the team <laughs> because we we'd been in the league you know six or seven years and you know you you add you know you add Ron Adele, you add Kelly Williams and Ryan Reyes we draft Jason Castro and Jared Dillinger. We get Larry in a trade, and all of a sudden, it's just like we, we, we also get Ali, you know, when, when when TNT made that big trade for him and Asi. So all of a sudden, we have all these pieces, and it's just like, all right, this is crazy because, you know, we're loaded. Um, and at the same time, again, it, it just seemed like the chemistry with, with that particular group seemed very similar to that first conference that Harvey and I played with Talking Text with those, with those other guys, you know, with, with Asi and – and Bong Ravs and, and Vic Pablo and those guys. And it just seemed like that was the transition from, from us being the young guys to, you know, seven, eight years later. Now we were the veteran guys leading a new group. And, you know, the rest uh, speaks for itself. Okay. Okay. And now, okay, so we have this little segment called Fast Break, uh, the Fast Break Round. Basically, we throw out a question. First uh, answer that pops into your head. Go say it out loud. All right. Jimmy and Harvey. Ali, I don't know what happened to you, but whatever. <laughs> Next episode na lang, Ali Peak. Next episode. Yeah. He, he's going right. to come in like the last 15 minutes. Watch. He's like, oh, man, I had jet lag. <laughs> he's going to be right. like, I was, at, I was at the bank. <laughs> Doing some push-ups. Okay. Here we is you, our fast you, break round. Okay. Ooh, this... This is gonna be a little funny. Because, so, so like, both of us, Chess, both of us, we just yeah, say whatever. Just gonna, yes, uh, we're right, gonna throw right. out your names. All right, we'll start. Jimmy, ultimate hype song in your playing years? Uh, probably um, 
one of the Tupac songs from one of his old albums. Okay. Harvey, same question. Ultimate hype song. Same. Tupac, All Eyes on Me. Hey. Mm. Okay. That's nice. Okay. Ito, Harvey. Toughest Showing body to get. <laughs> toughest, toughest body to get past. <laughs> toughest body to get past on the court. Oh. Probably uh, Bo Belga. Oh. Not just because of his stature, but, you know, he he's his feet are pretty quick, too, so. Yeah. Coach Topex for me. Yeah. Coach Topex. Uh, oh. Two, oh. He just he would just pick <laughs> me up full court yeah. every game. Like <laughs> as soon as I turn around, he'd be like right in my face. Like, <laughs> and, and you know, I mean, you know, all, all love to Coach Topex, but he wasn't a big like offensive scorer. So it just seemed like all of his energy was just like to just pressure and Defense. defend you. And he was. Yeah, he was, I mean, he had He was like hands. the Pat Beverly back then, huh? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very pesky yes. defender. Yes, yeah, yes. absolutely. One of the best. One of the best. Yes, yes. I was okay. I was supposed to uh, add two uh, changes to what you mentioned a while ago. Two pop song changes. Guys, 90s <laughs> boys. <laughs> yeah. You know. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jimmy, in your, in, again, in playing years, coach oh. with the most tricks up his sleeve. Coach with the most tricks up his sleeve. I'd say Coach Shot. You know, Coach Shot, he, you know, he, I mean, to his credit, he, he came up with a lot of creative ways on and off the court, you know, with our team, whether it was team building type stuff or, or even just his late game, his late game execution stuff. He was, he's up there one of the best for sure. Even when you went up against him, Coach Jimmy. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Even though we, even though we came back from, Oh, two, my rookie year, but that, that's that's another story. That's a great story, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for another time. Sorry for another time. Okay, Har- Coach Harvey. Um, I have to agree with Jimmy. Um, Coach Chat, whether it was, like you said, the game plans and the strategies he had for the games, but I think it was more of like the motivation he would do or for us, um, or he'll get upset, like, Sub us out like Harvey. What the f are you doing? Blah blah blah. Just yelling at you and then bench you, and then he'll be like, "Are you ready to go back in? Are you ready?" And you're like, yeah, like a minute, like a like, like, like a minute later, uh-huh. like a minute later, he'd sub you. I'd be like, "Are you ready to play now?" <laughs> like, yeah, I'm ready to play. Then get back in the game. It's yeah. like, all right, man. Yeah. <laughs> he wants that feedback though. Like he he drives off the energy that the players give back. You know, or something like Ali didn't have a good game. I'm sorry to talk about Ali. He's not here, but he never. He goes to the media and he puts out a missing person for Ali because he didn't play well that game. So Ali came yeah. back the next game and played excellent. But it's just those those little things that he would do to play play with guys' minds. The most. No, I, I, I had a couple of those too. I remember. <laughs> I remember I would come home and I used to read everything. So you know, I'd I'd, I'd read the paper the next morning and be like, oh, you know, Coach Chalk calls out. You know, Jimmy and Ron Adele, whenever those guys come back from vacation, we might have a chance to win the series. I'm like, here we go. Yeah. I'm going to get to practice four hours early today so I can do my extra shooting and be ready for game, whatever. But but he would yeah, also he, have um, – we'd have these moments before games where we go for a minute or two and just meditate. It's the first time he'd have the whole group. We'd be meditating, and he'll talk to us like, What's motivating you? What's driving you today? Think about your kids. Think about your family. And it's just like, oh, man, this is we're ready, you know, after that, yep. you know. So wow. just the different tactics he would have outside of the X's and O's. That's and awesome. uh, follow-up question, when you would guys transition to coaching, you better understood those, not, not those ways, those mm-hmm. methods. Coach Jimmy. No, absolutely, Mix. You know, a lot of, a lot of what we did as a team – you know, during, during the years with that, with that run that we had, um, I tried to create with the teams that I coached in in terms of, you know, the, the chemistry and camaraderie part and helping the guys understand that, you know, by playing unselfishly and, and playing the right way, it's not only going to allow each of them to be successful, but ultimately us as a team, you know, to, to have success. So it's something that, you know, I'm still trying to do with guys in the G league or, or the guys that I talked to on the Kings that, you know, understanding that the bigger picture and everything that in the game of basketball, if we can be great as a team, 
and everybody individually do what they do best, again, you give yourself the best chance to, to win. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Next. Ooh. Uh, Harvey. Harvey. <laughs> Toughest veteran in your rookie year. Oh man. I think oh, it would I got be one. it would be oh, there was a couple. So okay. who stands out to me? Number one would be Dennis Espino from Santa Lucia. Ooh. Inside out, rugged, um, you know, up and unders, very fundamental. Right. I had a hard time with him. And then I had a very difficult time with Eric Mink in his prime. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just same, same, same thing as Dennis. Inside major out. Major pain. Yeah. Major, major pain. pain. <clears throat> Definitely pain in my, you know what. <laughs> so those are two, those are two guys that gave me problems in my rookie year. And it's like, you know, welcome to the PBA. You gotta learn. Okay. You know? mm -hmm. And those Jimmy? were their peak times too, right? Yeah. Uh, Marlu, yeah. right? Yes. Uh, Dennis yes. Espino. All right. All right. I'm going to take you guys back with mine. Dale Singson. Ooh. Dale Michelle. Singson. Oh, wow. game. Yeah, game. Number 50. Dale Singson. Can I just tell you guys my, my first PBA game? This guy <laughs> comes up the court and right away, like the first play, he's like backing me down to the post from the three point line. I'm like, what is, what is he, what's, what's going on? And, and he was just like, you know, shoulder taking. I'm like, all right, I don't, how am I guarding him? And then he's <laughs> spinning this way and spinning that way and shooting fadeaways. I'm like, wow, like I'm, I'm, I'm getting cooked right now <laughs> in my first game of the PBA. So, you know, and, and wouldn't say a word, would just run back down the court every time he scored, wouldn't say anything. So, um, you know, shout out to, to Dale Singson, wherever he is. He was a, a great, great point was, guard who I think yeah, was, was, was awesome. very underrated. Um, uh, and I think another one, another one would be until we became teammates was Willie Miller. Um, mm. you know, he was a guy who would just cook you and he'd be screaming and <laughs> laughing and smiling. And it's like, okay, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need help guarding this dude. Um, yeah. So those two, those two guys definitely stand out. So shout out to my galing, guy. Galing. Galing, galing, galing. All, right. All right. Uh, Co coach Harvey, most impressive rookie in your final year maybe a couple of young guys oh, yeah. in your final young year guys. yeah yeah oh, man. i think my memory is going with my age now because we were in the bubble my last year so oh that's right i think yeah, that's um, right. i think aaron black was pretty impressive mm -hmm. um i think he won rookie of the year that that year season but we we're in the bubble and um it was just so much other stuff going on yeah. besides the game, just being cooped up in the room for 19 to 20 hours. But I think that who stood out to me would be uh, Aaron Black. Okay. All right. Jimmy? For me, um, my, my last year, it was great because even when I retired, I had a chance to continue working with them uh, for another season. I'd say Baser, uh, oh. Baser Amir and, and Chris Newsom. Um, getting a chance to, again, you know, all the stuff that I had learned from all my, my time with talking text and being with Harv and the guys, being able to, to impose all that wisdom on those two guys um, and, and to be there, you know, and to really be able to, on a daily basis, watch their growth um, and to see them still doing well in the PBA, you know, years later. So uh, those two guys are my guys. Okay. And next, ooh, uh, Jimmy basketball move that you always wanted to do but never got to Ooh, basketball move that i always wanted to do but never got to post up coach from the three-point line <laughs> from that yeah <laughs> i used to i used to ask coach norman if he'd let me run a post play but he wasn't <laughs> feeling he wasn't feeling that so um I, i'd probably say the post up okay. watching watching okay. johnny from my early years i always wanted to do it but i never got an opportunity to all right Harv? Um, not necessarily a move, but to come down, I guess be like Jimmy, come down poised at the heat of the game and come off a ball screen and just pull pull up from 30 feet, you know? Just, you know, just with that confidence. Just with, pure ice yeah, in his veins. Yeah, with 30 seconds left in the game. You know, I, I always I always imagine doing that, but, you know. <laughs> I, got, I got you. The I was there to clean it up. I was there to clean it up just in case you miss, but. <laughs> usually usually in those crunched moments 
uh, yeah. when Jimmy Shade was going in for sure. But yep. that's is that something yeah. I always dreamed of? <laughs> we we is already that the knew. signature move. Is that the signature move, Coach Jimmy? Oh yeah, no. I mean, I, I mean, Harv knows. Like, I loved the the end of the game because I just, you know, I I knew I knew how much work that that we put in, and I knew how much work that I put in. So, it didn't matter if I was struggling early or if I was making shots early. Like at the end of the game, if the ball was in my hand, I was very very confident that I'd make the right play, whether it was making a shot or passing to Harvey or, or one of the other guys. Um, I had I had ultimate confidence that that I could come through for for our team and and I think they relied on me to to make that play and again it wasn't it wasn't always making the shot it, sometimes it was it was making the right the right pass to Jason Harvey Ronadell you know the list goes on Ali wherever he's at um, <laughs> uh, but you know we we had we had we had so many weapons around you know during during that time it, it was it was. It, it made my job pretty easy. I was victim of a Jimmy Alapot game winner in college. Um, Jimmy was a, a year ahead of me. A lot of people don't know this, but Jimmy and I played against each other in college. His last year mm. in college before he went to the Philippines for the O2 uh, national pool. Yep. So we we're playing in my college. When we we're up by one point. They have the inbound. Four seconds left. He goes full court. He passes me at half court. Jimmy hits the the game winning layup, buzzer beater on the road. Hey, but with chess, I gotta I gotta admit, <laughs> I, I gotta give you guys a little backstory to that. So we're playing at, at Sonoma <laughs> State, and you know it's, it's it's a great crowd, and for some reason that particular night they had like this couch, right? Like they had like the stands, but then there was a couch like right level on the floor, and it was like it was it all the baseball like the, players. Yeah, it was like the former <laughs> the, or like the current athletes from other sports. And I mean, we're warming up, and they're letting me have it. Like, who let the who let the middle school kid on the court? You know, just like oh, all no. game, all game long. And I was just like, all right, I'm gonna have some for you guys. You know, this game. I, I mean, they were. It was like all you game long. You riding you all game the long. Bear. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I I enjoyed making that game winner that that night because after I made that shot, Harvey members, I ran right back to that corner. <laughs> And you know, said a couple of nice things to those guys um, as I as I little pleasantries, <laughs> yeah, pleasantries. A couple, four seconds, full court. That was coming four up seconds. a shot or a death. I ball. have the video. I will send it. I'll send it. Oh, that's nice. Wow. That's nice. We converted wow. it. I converted throw, right? it. It was it was a free throw. They made a free, free throw. throw to go up one. Not, was it a free throw? I think we made a, a a jump shot, and you guys took it out fast, and then. Yun, no timeouts. No, wow. Kaya pala may timeouts. Way back, time. way back, 2001 yeah, or so. 2002, something like that. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Harvey, signature move. Oh, signature move would probably really be baseline. The baseline oh, jump for jump all day. From Jimmy. Or just running the floor <laughs> and Jimmy throwing it down to me. Um, I wasn't really the guy that's going to break you down. With the ball, but I'm gonna get to the right spot every single time. Yep. So, I'll, I'll look up the court. Right Harvey will be right there with his hand up, and I'll throw it right <laughs> to his hand. <laughs> All yeah. right. Okay. okay. Uh, Harvey, most memorable career highlight? Man, there's so many in almost 20 years of playing in the PBA, but I think the one that it's mo I'm most proud of was uh, when I pay played my 700th game in the PBA. Um, to have my family there with me and to be one of the few members of that club and being doing it. Yes. I played 730. <laughs> <laughs> but to do it all with one team, um, looking back and reflecting, it's an accomplishment that I'm, I'm very proud of. Okay. Jimmy? Um, for me, uh, definitely when we, when we won the three-peat with Talking Text, um, because you know it hadn't been done, and, and I don't know how long, and and to do with the group that we had, um, you know we you know we we swept that final series to to win the three P with Coach Norman, and I just felt like that was that was like the moment for all of us, like all the work that we had put in, all you know everything that we had gone through as a team, on and off the court. Um, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but like that last probably seven eight minutes of that game was probably like some of the best basketball that I'd ever 
been on the court and being able to witness like as it was happening, like every guy on the court was making a shot and like the ball was just flying all over the place. It was, it was a special time for sure. And then of course, um, you know, my, my time with Gilas and, and, in 2013 against Korea, um, th those two for sure. Okay. Right. And for our final question, Migs, would you like to? <laughs> what would you want your legacy to be? Go, mm -hmm. Just someone that was known as a winner and someone that was uh, respected, not just amongst my teammates, but my peers in the PBA. All right. Great. Jimmy? Yeah, not to, not to copy Harv's answer, but uh, again, I think just to remember it as someone who was a winner um, and, and somebody who, you know, who played the game the right way and, and did whatever he could, you know, to, to be successful, um, you know, whether it was time on the court, you know, just dedicating, dedicating my life to, to the game and, and, and pouring, pouring my, my heart and soul into it um, because it's something that, that I love and then still have love for. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, from my career, you know, the, the next generation of guys will, you know, continue to try to raise that bar even a little higher. All right. If for, and for, for what it's worth, anyone who has followed your careers, anyone who has gotten to know you, anyone who has watched you on the court and gotten to know you off the court, the words that come to mind when the names Harvey Carey and Jimmy Alapagar mentioned, Harvey, always steadfast, dependable, reliable, hard worker. Jimmy, leader, always. Those are the words that are always used to describe uh, the two of you. So thank you so much for taking the time. Championships. 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 Winners, champions, Winners. <laughs> all that. So thank you so much for taking the time to guest on our show. We really appreciate it. And hopefully we can have you back on the show one of these days <laughs> with Ali and the rest of the, the rest of the Tropong Texters. And hopefully uh, you do uh, come back on the show. Thank you so much, Harvey Carey and Jim Yalapag for joining us on Off the Record with Migs and Cheska. Thanks. Thank you, you guys. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Really thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. Thank thank you. You. Great thank to see you guys. You guys take All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Coaches. All right, uh, it's an honor uh, for Harvey Carey and Jimmy Alapag to be here on Off the Record with Big Sanchezka. For your guest requests, please do follow at OTR Mix Cheska on FB and IG. Follow ABS CBN Sports on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Of course, OTR with Big Sanchezka, Tuesdays and Fridays, 9 p.m. So there you have it, Jimmy Alapag, Harvey Carey, right here on Off the Record. So once again, this has been Off the Record with Mix and Cheska, and we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.